this is the final look. Merry Christmas and welcome back to my channel. I hope everybody has been enjoying their holidays and is having a wonderful Christmas today. So today I'm going to be doing a get ready with me Christmas edition. So I'm going to be walking you guys through my Christmas day look. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to my channel, give it a like, and ring the bell for notifications. I have recently gotten the Too Faced Gingerbread Spice bite-sized palette, so it's great for traveling, and I did, just, I did travel up north to be with my family over the holidays, so this was great to fit in my suitcase. And I actually haven't tried it out yet, so I'm gonna open it up and decide what colors to use for today's look. It's really cute. It's really small and apparently, um, apparently the palette smells like gingerbread. So that's, that's cute. Let's smell it. It smells like cookies. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say it smells like gingerbread, but it does smell like cookies. Um, we have a lot of beautiful colors in this palette, so I'm excited. So first up, of course, I had to put in my creaseless hair clips so I don't get any makeup in my hair. I actually recently did a keratin treatment on it to make it really straight, smooth, and shiny. So I haven't washed that out yet. I leave it sit for as many days as possible. So hopefully I don't have too many flyaways. And now for the most important step is I am putting on my Urban Decay eyeshadow primer. I recently switched, I ran out of my other one that I had used in a makeup tutorial a couple months ago and I actually, I didn't think I would like this one because I really liked my other one but I, I'm i really impressed with the Urban Decay eyeshadow primer. I love the wand that it comes with and it's kind of almost like a tacky primer so I feel like the eyeshadow holds a lot better. Okay, so I got my primer on my lids and now I am ready to go for eyeshadow. So this palette has a lot of different colors. We have, um, I don't know if you can see it very well. So we have like an, a lot of pinks, beiges, like nude undertone colors and golds. So I just have to decide what to use. The first eyeshadow I'm going to apply on the top of my lid is the light pink the light pink eyeshadow and it's called looky at my cookie and this is just going to give it a nice base and next i'm going to be using figgy pudding it's this one right here for my crease well to start my crease Ooh, it's like very pigmented now i'm kind of scared i got too much on I don't know. Well, it is really pretty. So I haven't really blended it out too much. I'm gonna take um, a couple different colors to blend it out, but this is looking a lot pinker than I intended it to look. I was gonna try to go with the more neutral tones, but I'm kinda liking it. So I'm gonna try to tone it down a little bit. I'm gonna go in with the this color right here, it's called Spice is Nice. And blend out the crease. It's almost like a little, an orange color. Next color I'm gonna go in with to continue to blend the eyeshadow on my lid is this nude brown shade here. It's called Gingerbread Latte. So I'm just gonna lightly dip my brush in it and then just go over to tone it down because I do like the pink and orange shade, but I don't want it to be too bright because I don't know how my family is going to react to that. So I do want it a little bit toned down to be a nice like, like a gingerbread spice look with a pop of color. And now I'm going to be taking this flat brush just to blend out the color from my crease that I filled in just so I don't have any harsh lines. Blending is honestly one of the most important things when you do makeup because you don't want any harsh lines whether it be from your eyeshadow or your contour um because no one wants that 
All right, next I'm going to be using this white frost color. It's called Frostbit Me. And that is, I'm going to be taking my ring finger and that's what I'm going to be applying here where it's still kind of left white. I want it to be almost like frosted snow right at my lash line. I typically use my ring finger to pat down any glitter eyeshadow that I apply because I find that tends to be, when I use my ring finger, a lot more pigmented than when I use a brush. And I like my, my glitter to be really extra. I also typically use my ring finger when I'm applying highlights like my nose or above my lip. All right, now that I got all the frost, frostbite me <laughs> eyeshadow down, I'm just going to be, I'm not dipping my brush. This is my, um, the color, the brush that I use for gingerbread latte and spice is nice. I'm not dipping it again. I'm just taking what is left over on the brush to go back over my lid and blend out the frost bite. So that's, I'm gonna stop doing my eyeshadow for now and move on to eyeliner. For eyeliner, I am using the NYX, that's the point, um, eyeliner marker in black, and I'm going to be doing a cat eye. I just finished my eyeliner. Um, I did a pretty big cat eye on each eye. And to hydrate my skin, I am using the Lord Jones CBD oil because my skin is so dry. I had said that I flew up north for the holidays and because I guess of the fire, we've been lighting a fire every day and just the heat is drying out my skin like insanely. So I decided to use the CBD oil to try and not have dry skin. So that's already soaked in. Um, I actually put it on before I started this tutorial and I just wanted to tell you guys about it because I wanted it to soak deep in my skin before I started applying my primer and foundation. All right, so I'm almost out of this. I need more, but I use the Tarte Base Tape Primer before my foundation. I use about this much. It's, um, it's like two pumps, like one and a half, two pumps. I typically let my primer set a little bit so it gets a little bit drier and tackier before I apply anything else to my face. Um, I just feel like I like to let it set so I don't start rubbing it away as I'm applying my other products. So for my contour, I use the Fenty Beauty Contour and Highlight Sticks. So I go in with the shade called Mocha to contour my face. Um, I got in this shade over like the spring and summer, so I feel like it's a bit too dark on me now since I'm not tan, but that's okay because I am just going to blend it out. I always contour my nose. I apply it to kind of like the top of my cheekbone. A little bit on my chin and then a little bit on my forehead just to give it some definition and then I go in with the bamboo matchstick um, so this is like a highlight or concealer type of shade and I apply that down the bridge of my nose right underneath where I contoured under my cheekbones and then I take the contour brush um, and just blend it all out. I love all of Rihanna's Fenty Beauty line, but I have to say my favorite part about the matchsticks is that they're magnetic. So they all just stay in my makeup purse together as a brick, so it's really nice, so they're not all loose. And these are the contour and highlight, while this is the, um, the glittery golden highlight stick, so I just combine them all together. I actually have one more, but I didn't bring it with me on this trip because I didn't think I was gonna need it. It was like a corally highlight shade, which I think would be really beautiful, but I don't really use that one as much as I use the gold. Great. Okay. 
Now that I contoured my face, I am going to start my foundation. Um, I use the Clinique Beyond Perfecting Foundation. I've been using this one since college, so it's been going on like six years now, and I will not change my foundation. Maybe if I find something better, but this just works for my skin really well, so I'm gonna keep stick with it. Um, because of how well this um, foundation blends out, a little goes a long way. So I only put a couple dots on my face, just little teensy tiny ones, and then blend it out. I've gone into the habit of always wetting my beauty blender before I apply my foundation. I think it goes on a lot smoother and looks a lot better. Um, Morgan, my best friend Morgan, has tried it out and now she won't go back either. So if you apply your foundation, maybe try wetting it beforehand. Just squeeze all the water out before you start applying it though. I am going to go back in and just add a little bit more contour, not too much. Um, after I apply my foundation, sometimes I go back in and touch it up depending on how heavy I applied it before. All right. And I do put the concealer highlight stick back down the bridge of my nose one more time. And just blend that out with my fingers. So now I'm going in with the Tarte Creaseless Concealer um, for my under eyes. And like I said in my previous makeup tutorial, you do not buy this creaseless concealer if you if you don't bake your face. It's this creaseless concealer is incredibly tacky and sticky and it creases if you don't bake your face, so I'm not really sure why it's called the creaseless concealer unless they're assuming that you do bake, but um, it's just not good if you don't bake your face. It's quite disgusting, honestly, <laughs> but I do like it. I like it when I bake, so now I'm, before I forget, I'm going in with the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer now to conceal any other problem areas. It looks like a lot of concealer, but I'm not really covering any acne. I'm not breaking out right now. I'm more so covering um, just some dark spots or spots from acne scars that I had. Okay, so now that I have finished blending in all of my concealer because my skin is very dry and I don't want it to just dry out by applying the makeup, I'm going in with the Mario Badiscu, I don't know how to say it, but um, it is the facial spray with aloe, sage, and orange blossom just to rehydrate my face. Okay. And I try to keep it away from my eyeshadow. So that is just to add a little bit of hydration and refresh my skin before I go into baking. I do like to apply my concealer with my fingers, I feel like it just helps it blend in more and soak into my foundation. Um, I think it applies better with my fingers versus the sponge or the beauty blender. That's just my opinion, my personal preference. Also, I think brushes do apply it pretty well, but I'm just, just started doing it when I first started learning makeup with my fingers and I haven't changed since. So now time for baking. I'm going in with my Tarte baking powder and using my Beauty Blender um, powder sponge. And I just apply a little bit of the powder in the, the lid and dip my sponge into it. And pretty much just bake my face, apply the baking powder everywhere that I have concealed. So baking helps really set and secure your concealer and foundation. 
I actually do bake my face almost every time I apply makeup because when I put on makeup I'm wearing I'm applying it to last so I'll wear it for like you know a full 12 hours like really just all day all night because um normally when I apply makeup I apply it on days that I'll be going on a date or going out with my friends and hanging out and I also try to record the same days which is typically on my weekends because I work all week so I just want my face to last all day. So now I let my face bake for about 10 minutes. Pretty much the heat from my face is going to help set the concealer under there with this powder underneath for a really airbrushed finish. It won't be oily or greasy or anything after I take it off and it really just helps it last. So now I'm going to apply my false lashes. I'm using the Eyler eyelashes. Um, these ones are number eight. They're kind of, I reuse my eyelashes so they're not attached. If you keep them good, gently clean them after every use, they will last quite a while. We're using the Duo Lash Glue, I am going to apply it to the lash line, being careful not to get it on the actual eyelashes itself. I really like the Eyler lashes because they're um, faux minx, so they're usually very fluffy, pretty, pretty th thick eyelashes. So now I apply, I apply a good amount of lash glue to each lashes, um, and now I'm gonna let that sit for about 30 seconds to a minute to let it get really tacky, so that way, um, they actually hold and stay up nicely. To apply them, I'm going to just gently rest them right above my natural lash line and then secure them down. Now I take my tweezers and adjust them to where exactly I want them to lay. I would say I'm pretty good and quick at applying false eyelashes, but I, obvious, I honestly have been applying false eyelashes for maybe like 10 or more years now. I've been wearing them since middle school because growing up I would do a lot of pageants and modeling and I pretty much have been wearing false eyelashes since before they were a thing. And I remember in middle school people, middle school and high school people used to think it was weird to wear false eyelashes, but now it's like you can't wear makeup without false eyelashes. So I guess I was ahead of the time and now I am just really good at applying them. I can apply them pretty quickly and I usually don't get any glue in my eye. So again, just lay it on your lash line and readjust as needed. You don't need to use tweezers to apply your eyelashes, you can use your fingers. I just prefer to work with tweezers because I wear incredibly long eyelashes and I feel like this is easier to secure it where I need it versus my fingers. So now my eyelashes are setting, my face is pretty much almost finished baking. And this is something new that I've added to my beauty routine because my friend Morgan had recommended it. I am now br using bronzer to um, contour my face additionally. So I am using the Kylie Jenner bronzer in tequila tan. This is what it looks like. And I'm just taking a flat brush and going to apply this to about right on top of my cheekbones. I also am going to apply the bronzer along my hairline up here, just to give a little more shape and definition. And to around my chin, and down the sides of the nose, kind of where I had already previously contoured. And now I'm going to use my fluffy brush to remove any of the excess baking powder on my face. Pretty much after it's done baking, it um, just wipes away pretty easily with a brush um, because it has, powder has already set into my foundation. I'm 
You really wanna make sure to get all of the excess powder off. All right, so now just to finish with the bronzing powder. Now moving on. So next up for blush, this is the Tarte um, Amazon Clay Blush in the Sensational color. It's honestly almost the same color as my bronzer, but this is what I'm going to apply to my cheeks and kind of like the top of my cheekbone. Um, I make sure not to apply it too low. I know people always say the apples of your cheeks, but that really does, in my opinion, drag down my face. And that is not what I'm going for. So basically just apply it here kind of like my temple area up there and a little bit on my nose. And I just go in with the brush in to blend it out, any harshness of the blush. But I don't really add too much blush, so don't really have an issue with that. Next up, I'm going back in with the Fenty Match Sticks. This is the highlight. It is in the color blonde. And I'm going to be applying this to above my cheekbones. So kind of on top of and above where I had just applied my blush. Um, on the ball of my nose. So you get that cute little button nose. And up here, as well as on my lip. All right. So I go in and blend this out on my nose and lip with my finger. And then I use the highlighter brush to blend out what is on my cheekbone. And now on top of that, I'm applying the Fenty highlighter. It is in the shade Trophy Wipe. And that is what it looks like. Using my ring finger for my nose and upper lip, as well as I put it a little bit on the arches of my eyebrows. And then I use my highlighter brush for my cheekbones. I like a really strong highlight. I like it to be incredibly glittery. I wanna look like a glazed donut. So now I pretty much got most of my face done, but I am going to go in with the Bare Minerals Powdered Concealer and just apply a little bit of that. I don't really need too much powder concealer. I feel like at this point, I just kind of apply it out of habit, but if I do have a really big trouble spot um, that all of the other foundation and concealer won't hide, I do go back in always with the powder concealer and this honestly is a miracle worker. It really does help. I like to go with my powder concealer in here just to blend out um, any of the excess powder concealer just to blend out my eyeshadow anymore. So now my face is basically done. I just need to go in and touch up my eyeshadow. I am going to be doing my eyeshadow on my lower lash line. Um, that's something I always do. A lot of people don't, but I feel like it really makes my look and makes my eyes really pop. So I'm going to be using this flat, small brush. I'm going back in with the Figgy Pudding eyeshadow and just gently dabbing that on my lower lash line. So I did that, and now I'm going to go back in with the Gingerbread Latte to finish it. Just kind of blending, using the Gingerbread Latte to blend out the Figgy Pudding. And again, this pink is the figgy pudding and this nude color is the gingerbread latte. And now using my ring finger, I'm going with the Frostbite Me, um, the white shimmer, to apply this to the corners of my eye. Now I have finished my makeup almost. I am going to apply the Morph Set and Refresh Mist 
all over my face. I like this one because it's continuous mist, so I feel like it really gets all over my face in one um, like cohesive layer. This one I really do love because it smells like strawberries or berries, um, and I ended up finding it in Ulta and it was on sale, so I bought like six more containers of it. And I got the brushes that match because pink is so cute. All right, so well, now that this is setting, I'm going to go back in and apply. This is pretty much the final thing. I'm going to apply um, my Great Lash Mascara on my lower lash line. Okay, I finished my mascara and pretty much everything is done. But now just for the lip. There are a couple different lip options to choose from. Um, I have like a brown from Mary Kay, but I also have two different reds from MAC. I have this very dark red, more of like a burgundy, as well as this, um, this kind of like muted red. But I'm thinking that I'm going to go with this red lip because it's Christmas. So first, I'm going to apply lip liner. First, I'm going to apply lip liner and then my lipstick afterwards. I don't really overline my lips. I like the shape of my lips as they are, so I'm not really going to do too much with that. Okay, so I finished applying my lip liner. And this is what it looks like. I just draw, I literally line on my lips and then I apply a couple lines up my lips just because I like to use a lip liner that's a different shade than my lipstick and blends it out. And now, whoops, wrong color, that's the dark one. I'm going to be applying the red. I feel like it will look nice with this really warm and Ginger Ready eyeshadow and it is Christmas and I do think um, I am going to be wearing a red scarf and a red skirt for Christmas to be festive, so it'll match. You can apply your lipstick with a brush, but I just prefer to apply it straight from the tube because it's my lipstick and it's not going to be going on anyone else. And looks good to me. I know sometimes red lipstick can intimidate men or women and, you know, but red lipstick is kind of like a power play. It's, red lipstick means, is, um, is a very strong, vibrant color and, you know, it signifies um, that you're a powerful, independent, strong woman and you know, some men who make fun of women who wear red lipstick, well, I guess you're just intimidated. Personally, I don't think it's really any man can have, any straight man that does not wear makeup can really have an opinion on anybody else's makeup because why do you care? But, well, we'll never know. It's kind of funny. So this is the finished look. And let me go put on my Christmas outfit so you can see how everything looks together. All right, so I did wear this outfit for my um, Christmas tree ornament decorating video. And this wasn't the original outfit I had packed with me to wear for Christmas, but I kind of just like threw this together and I was like, this would be so cute to wear on Christmas day. So it is the white, um, so here it is. It is a white bodysuit um, with a red leather skirt and the red scarves that I've had for so many years. This is the final look. And I don't know if I'm gonna wear the Santa hat, but you know, Santa hats are cute. I actually prefer my black Santa hat better, but this one matches the look. 
yeah, I'm not gonna wear the Santa hat. But this is the final look. I again use the Too Faced Gingerbread Spice Palette and oh, I forgot to tell you guys, I was using a MAC red lipstick and the red lipstick was in the shade Chili. Now it's time to go downstairs and be with my family and celebrate Christmas. So Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays and Happy New Year to all of you. I hope you enjoyed this Get Ready With Me video. Please give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and ring the bell for notifications. See you next time.